This year, I've been thinking deeply about career development and the age-old question, what will I do when I grow up? You see, I'm at an age where my children are making career development decisions. What will they do? <laughs> they are growing up. I work in technology education. I am contracted by a college called Institute of Technology Development, or ITD Canada. I see change is inevitable because of immigration status, emerging technologies such as artificial intelligence, or simply a mismatch where your work doesn't make you happy anymore. Around the world, refugees, immigrants, youth from troubled backgrounds, displaced families grapple with this age-old question, what will I do when I grow up? At ITD, we have this course called CAP 200. It includes this half hour where experts come in and talk about cover letters, resumes, LinkedIn profiles, you know, the mechanics of getting a job. We call these mentor moments. Pretty early on, though, we discovered that just the mechanics are not enough. People need to talk about our, our concept of career development is evolving because of technology and global economics. Frankly, people need to talk about life lessons. These discussions are important because at the time of change, you can break. You can lose sight of that joy in your work. Look around you. You'll see it in your neighborhood. I believe we need a new perspective. And that's what I'm here to talk to you about today. I have experienced becoming a broken person at an early age. I had a joyful childhood great schools, wonderful family, grandparents, aunts, uncles, cousins, until one night. I remember I was about 12 years old, sitting in our basement, holding my eight-year-old brother in my arms. Outside, sirens are blasting. Mom whispers, those aircrafts can only carry three missiles. Listen for three explosions. Boom, boom, boom. Then we can go back and try and sleep. I was a child in Tehran, the capital of Iran, which was at war with its neighboring country, Iraq. That night, in our dark basement, that makeshift family bomb shelter, I wondered, will I live to see tomorrow again? Will I ever hold my brother again? Will I ever see my parents smile again? Over time, my parents made the difficult decision to leave all their personal belongings behind, a secret escape, an arduous journey through multiple countries for the hope of a better life for me and my brother. Five years later, we're existing in Canada, downtown Vancouver, British Columbia. I'm 17 years old in this professor's murky office, wearing big sunglasses to cover my left swollen black eye. It's serious, it's the size of a baseball. It took 30 stitches in my eyelid. I tell her, on my way to school today, I got into a car accident and that's why I missed my final exam. She lowers her head, glaring at me over her glasses, and says, I don't believe you. You Iranians are all the same. You'd say anything to get away with it. I walked out of her office feeling angry, sad, numb, 
thinking, Dad will never understand. I'm supposed to become a doctor. Arriving home early from school, standing at the screen door, I hear an argument. You see, our first residence in Canada was this small one-bedroom apartment with no furniture, no bed, no blanket, no family, no extended family or friends. We lived there with the clothes that we had traveled in. In Iran, dad was an executive. In Canada, he was working the graveyard shift at a convenience store in the bad part of town. We later found out that prostitutes, pimps, gangsters were going there in the middle of the night and giving him a hard time. Mom was taking some courses that the Canadian government was offering for free. Eventually, we moved out of that apartment into a little bigger apartment with actual beds. And this is where I'm standing, listening to my parents yell at each other for the very first time in my entire life. I can't hear what they're saying. To this day, I have no clue what they were arguing about. But I can guess. There's this one topic that they always had a conflict around. Dad never wanted to leave Iran. My parents eventually had a wonderful, wonderful life in Canada. But until the day he passed away, my father regretted the decision of leaving his wonderful job, his family, his friends, his base, to come here, only to find out that this was no safe haven. I hear, look at us now. Look at the way we live. It felt like the ground crumbled underneath me. I couldn't catch a break. I had lost everything. I had left everything behind. No hope, no future. And now, it felt like my family was falling apart. You see, for me, like many others around the world, the hopes of freedom turn into despair. When you're broken, you can't dream of big things. I look at my children and wonder, what career path will they choose? I look at the students at the career college some are desperate, broken. They will do anything to just make ends meet. The primary goal, how will I stay here? How will I become a permanent resident of this country? We need a new perspective. I told you how I became broken. Let me share with you who inspired me to create a new and better future for myself? Right around the time that my eye had completely healed, mom doesn't want to get on the bus by herself at night and go across town. So here I am, against my will, sitting with her in this room in North Vancouver. We're seated on carpeted floors, all around me on the walls, our Persian calligraphy. Everyone else, about the 50 or so people that are there, are seated on the ground, very quiet, almost still. Some even have their eyes closed. Tall, kind featured Professor Nader Anga glides into the room and takes a special cushion in the front. He says, man is the architect of his environment. You are a leader with natural capabilities. You are responsible to nourish your talents. You are in charge. You can create. Stop blaming other people. Man is the architect 
of his environment. That night changed me. I decided to stop blaming my parents, instructors, the racist, the government, God, everyone except myself. I decided to take my life back into my own hands, one decision at a time. That night, that mentor opened my heart. I started the journey of self to I, reconnecting, rediscovering my true essence. Over time, I took many more trips to Khanagha, MTO Shah Maqsudi's School of Sufism. I looked at the lifestyle of a doctor. I studied, is this what I really want? Is this what's going to make me happy? Or is this just my father's dream for me? I started to set personal goals. I started to make new friends. I started to enjoy learning again. I even got a girlfriend. You see, broken people need mentors to open their hearts. I was an immigrant. I was broken, emotionally stunted. I learned man is the architect of his environment. My LinkedIn profile today is not a straight line he became a doctor. I diverged, I zigged, I zagged, and ended up in education technology. And that's how I know because of technology, you can leverage international markets. And traditional degrees are just not enough anymore. The profile of a successful person in the modern world it's a little bit different. I challenge you. I challenge you to open your heart to new possibilities. Choose a career path that excites you. One that's aligned with who you truly are. As a society, we can do better at the age-old questions. Who am I? What will I do when I grow up?